Alrighty. Let us begin with the recap. <clears throat> so it is currently session 103. Uh, the date is Thunchir, the 24th. And upon bringing Torm to the Cobalt Vault in Vasselheim, caged like a packed sardine, you escorted him into the Cobalt Vault. Uh, it was revealed that options to save Torm from his mutation are very limited, and either that of a wish spell or performing the Ritual of Penance, which requires uh, a great number of objects and steps to complete, that would be the only ways to bring Torm back to his former self. Uh, before deciding to set off right away for the Astral Plane, you were reminded of your deal with your monster slaying companion, Haskin Anakashka. Uh, in return for aiding you in untying the ley lines and confronting Diamond Dow Pearson, uh, you would help slay the ancient white dragon, Voldrun the Frostbringer, or the Frost Harbinger. Uh, you persuaded the Cobalt Soul to allow Torm his freedom as a means to help slay the dragon. Uh, and the Cobalt Soul also took a slab of meat from Torm's arms as a some sort of means to find an antidote or cure to his mutation. Uh, Jan revealed that he's actually a changeling. Uh, Haskin became immediately sus uh, suspicious. Uh, he said that most changelings have an ill intent and only sow chaos wherever they go. Uh, it's easy for them uh, when they can steal anyone's identity. And However, some monsters have proven themselves to be good in nature, so he plans to see if Jan's intentions are pure of intent, or at least not outwardly evil. Uh, he also informed the group of a village in the far reaches of Wildmount where many changelings have been known to hail from in Far Harum, Joras. So, where is Ed? Uh, he will not be joining us today. He is busy with uh, with Joe currently. Yeah, Makes Joe's sense. mom had a stroke. <clears throat> so, uh, using the dark as a way to hide Torm from the populace, you set out onto the road and headed for the lair of Voldrum. On the way, you've agreed to bring a cart of supplies to Moldire, uh, a town that's been harassed and threatened by the presence of the Har Fr uh, Frost Harbinger. Sounds like us. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> so what would you gents mm -hmm. like to do first? Probably for the best that we actually get these supplies their owners sounds like they really need it yep continue going north towards mold deer all right sounds like what we want to do so first i'd like somebody to roll a d100 for the weather dibs out <laughs> i got this nice nice Good stuff i think it's almost a wish right there Oh, nice. So you find that as you guys continue on the road and uh, things become a little bit more clear, winds start to die down. Uh, it's still kind of cool, but it's not too bad. It's probably at worst, maybe minus eight degrees Celsius. Um, morning does eventually come by, but by this time, you guys probably would choose to take your rest so you guys uh, can lose your point of exhaustion that you have gotten from traveling out of the city uh, before you were able to rest. Indeed, let us rest. Very well. Uh, you guys do rest without really any issue. If you guys want to choose to do some watches for... I'll do a watch. I mean, just in the day. Alright, so Kongar will do well, first watch. Who's doing second and third? I'll do with Adno. Okay, Adno and Sinra. Who's doing third? I could. I would do third. Okay, so Zerakil and Atesh will do third. Yay, team. <laughs> Kongar, anything you want to do during your watch Well, everyone's kind of just hanging out in that big-ass tent you guys got? I am going to cook some food. Very well. Uh, so you kind of quietly cook some food for yourself. Uh, make your cooking check. I'll cook for who's ever is hungry. You're the only one awake. You're doing watch first watch. Oh, <laughs> then kind of rude to cook for yeah. everyone. Then, then, then I'm 
Then I'm going to wait to cook until everybody's up. I will um, kind of go over, look at Torm. Torm's not sleeping. Kinda... How's it going, buddy? Uh, well, I feel uh, gray. Want me to make you more hot soup? No. No, I yeah. think not. Want to sit and stare at the tarp together? <laughs> yes. Okay, let's do that. See you I, I plop down next to him and just like stare at the wall silently, making no motion, yeah. just hanging out. Yeah, he, he's obviously outside the tent because he can't fit. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, you guys just watch. I will the sit with him intently. You see uh, a little bit of drool coming from Tom's mouth, a little bit dripping from like his open mouth and <laughs> teeth can't seem to stop it from happening uh you see him kind of like fidgeting and kind of like just lightly digging at the ground and each like little dig he does it seems to like dig uh, probably a big enough hole to like fit your foot in at least or both of them hmm really good at digging holes now he doesn't really I respond mean, so much he just kind of like nods slowly and keeps looking at the tarp they're also kind of a dwarf as well so i don't know which side you got that from but pretty interesting I will also dig a hole, just like hand and fist digging a hole. <laughs> yeah, he's not really paying attention to the digging. He's just kind of like just fidgeting in the ground. So you, you well start, now I'm you just curious digging. how big of a hole I can dig with like one hand. So I'm just kind of mimicking. Okay, yeah. So you kind of try to dig a hole beside his hole a little bit to to compare. It's probably about eh, like a fourth the size of the hole he's making with like one finger. I try different things, spreading my fingers out really wide to see if I can make it bigger, but <laughs> it hurts me. <laughs> uh, so you continue to like dig this this kind of like almost uh, 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 like little trench <laughs> by Torm uh, as you do your watch, and uh, it's fairly uneventful overall. You end up going for your rest, so you can take off your point of exhaustion and uh, add no and Zinra take the next watch. Well, add no and Zinra. Mm -hmm. I want to craft. Okay. What would you like to craft? Three of my potions because they expire at every long rest. Okay. Yeah. So you kind of like take some time, Zinra. You can see as Adno is kind of yeah, kind of over by herself a little bit. She has almost like this kind of uh, uh, like table you could like bring into bed essentially like that just a really small kind of alchemy set that she has and she's kind of like just pouring her own little ingredients together and kind of making a few potions and things you said like little puffs of smoke different colors coming up do you need help i have a few years of experience i should be okay as one like explodes <laughs> <laughs> and are we it's the middle of the day yep lots well, and we're early like, morning and but like we're, are we in a bush are we on a road you're on the road Probably just off the side. It's a bit snowy. I mean, there's, it's kind of melty snow. You see like old spattered blood from previous battles with Diamond Dow and the uh, Bastion uh, Guard from Vasselheim. Uh, you see some wolf tracks that are seem to be kind of old as well. Okay, well, I'm going to um find a little tree stump and kind of sit beside it and bring my fancy jacket all nice and cozy around me and I'm going to sit there and whistle and I'm going to pull out, I have a, still have Halitha's wine, so I'm going to pull out a bottle of wine and I'm just going to casually sit there and watch Ad Adno do her potions and... You, you, st you strike quite a figure as this half-orc. Uh, go sit down on a stump wearing a uh, like nice cool. leopard fur uh, yeah. coat and drinking uh, incredibly to, fine right? wine. And, white gloves. And, and some nice white gloves. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Her and Uncle should have a conversation. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> so you guys' watch goes uneventful. And for the mm -hmm. third and last watch, Sarah Kill and Atesh, it is your turn for your watch. As Adno and Zinra take their rest. 
What does Zerak kill do? I'm gonna check to see what Torm is up to. All right. Yeah, Zerak kill. You go. You walk up to Torm. You see, uh, he's kind of like just dug a small rut to either side of him with his fingers a little bit. Uh, he's just staring at your guys' tent where you guys are sleeping. See a bit of drool coming from his mouth and kind of just landing on his chest and going down to his belly and uh, kind of going over his nice uh, dwarven plate that's been outstretched from his form. Uh, you also see next to him, just to the right of him, closest to you, or is a kind of a weird kind of trench uh, made by hand uh, for some reason. Well then, what would you like to do, Zerakil? <clears throat> uh, Torm, uh, you, you got a little something there. He says, "Do I?" He kind of like just lightly wipes uh, some of the drool off the front of his plate armor, but just like leaves this like this muck from his fingers and kind of makes it worse. And he just kind of shrugs and just like. Ugh. doesn't seem to care. How are you feeling, by the way? I feel bored. Can I ask him to play cards again? It's just Sarah Kill right now. You guys You're are sleeping. sleeping. I slept the first watch, oh, so okay. I don't... I would have been nothing, but He's yeah, sitting by the tent. I could have heard. Sure. Yeah, it's easy enough to hear his low, billowing voice. Yeah, you can come out and ask to see if he wants to play cards. And <clears throat> as you kind of like show them to him, he just kind of like looks at the like. Is it like a, a slight side eye at the cards and uh, just doesn't seem interested? Just keeps staring at the tent. I'll you, slink back in. You can kind of see him tent. like uh, make it a, a slightly deeper, a little. Uh, hole next to him with a f like a few of his fingers as he's like fiddling in the dirt kind of like a, a frustrated kind of gesture I'll just be like okay and go back in the tent uh Torm uh, I know this must be a very difficult time for you He just keeps staring. Doesn't really say anything. Kind of like just this, uh, like, huff. Just like... <sighs> and you see him know. kind of take out his keg a little bit and kind of like look at it and just kind of like start just endlessly kind of pouring ale from uh, the cork until it stops. Takes a little bit. There's probably like three pitchers worth. He just kind of like pours it over his toes in front of the tent. I know in times of great hardships, it is it is difficult to see your way. But remember, just remember who you were fighting for. Well, let's see. He's going to do a... Uh... The wisdom save for that. He has really good wisdom, but has failed a lot. You see As, him kind of uh, stare down for a sec, and he kind of looks down, looks over, and you see him just kind of look at you for a long while. You see the kind of jaundiced, uh, pupilless eyes looking at you, and he just kind of nods a little bit. When he gets up, kind of like brushes off some of the dirt and kind of turns around and finds a better spot that he hasn't kind of destroyed. Kind of like looks up into the sky instead. Kind of like watching the clouds. But yes, as, as you guys are doing that, Atash, what are you doing? Uh, I will go off a bit into clearing or forest or whatever is nearby mm -hmm. 
I'll uh, mark a spot in the snow and burn it away so it's fresh grass underneath. Okay. To sit down on. Uh, and then I will pull out my crystal ball. All right. So you pull out your crystal ball. It's you been see. a day now since last I used it. Uh, probably or about two. Or is it still two. the same day? Oh, two days? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I will attune to it, and then I will fire off a scry at the um, Voldrun dude. At Voldrun? Yep. Interesting. Okay. So you fire off the scry, and you'll up into the clouds, breaking through... Uh, like the couple sparse clouds that might be there. You go forward north towards the mountains and uh, further down you see uh, there's this large icy cavern on the outside it appears to be the ruins of this uh, old village. Only like stone frames pretty much are left behind. You go inside and you see this large cavern. There's just, uh, icy floor with some various pillars in the center. You see uh, strewn treasure all about. A lot of it is buried beneath ice. Uh, at the back of the cavern, you see this vast airship that has been frozen and buried in ice, as well as other creatures. Uh, large, almost like centipede-like uh, creatures that have been frozen. Uh, you also see what appears to be a giant that's been frozen, buried in the ice as well. And then, pfft, the vision goes straight upward, and you see kind of just perched there, almost like a bat is Voldru, the ancient white dragon, almost cat-like in its posture, just sleeping on the ceiling of the cavern. Alright, I take... How long does this last? I forget. About ten minutes, I think. Yeah. Uh... Ten minutes is casting time. Concentration up to ten minutes. So yeah. Um, so I'm gonna just watch for ten minutes and take in everything I can about the surrounding within 120 foot radius. Yep. Just like, kind of eyeball the treasure, see how much I could estimate there is, how many things are locked away in the ice, uh, escape routes, ways in. Anything, anything that I can see. There seems, seems to be quite a bo uh, quite a bit. Uh, even uh, amongst the treasure, you see like various potions and things. Uh, you see weapons uh, that have been long lost. Uh, you see uh, from where you were, as you zoomed from the outside, you saw it was just a blizzard outside, just a complete whiteout. But inside this cavern, it's not so bad. But you can even see. As the dragon breathes, just regularly, you see this frosty kind of puffs of breath. As you look around, though, you do see uh, also skeletal remains of those who have tried to assail them in the past. Uh, you see uh, on the frosty, uh, kind of icy ground beneath the dragon, uh, where it roosts, you see uh, that there is a uh, almost broken kind of runic symbol upon the ground where it was initially uh, imprisoned, uh, but then released. And you can kind of see as it, it was shattered and broken. Uh, no longer usable. Can I gauge what that symbol might have been? You can make an arcana check. Okay. It's not going to be good, but I'll do it. You have no idea. Yeah. Crit one. <laughs> yeah, it's some kind of ancient magic. Uh, I'll try and, like, remember the symbol. Uh, okay, I'm gonna say make an intelligence check to remember it, like intricately. Okay, you think you have a foggy idea? Yeah, I just like just enough to like sketch the basic shape of it, basically. Mm. When I'm done my scry. Um, all right, any alternate entrances or exits? Besides there, the cave hole. There doesn't appear to be. 
the cavern uh, hole is quite large. Uh, probably you gauge maybe about thirty feet wide or so. Hmm. All okay. right. <sighs> okay. Uh, yeah, I will just like I'll just keep looking around for the entire ten minutes, but like as much information as I can get mm -hmm. of like where he's positioned in the cave, kind of like tactical places that we might be able to get some shelter if we needed it within the cave from like breath and stuff. There's some places you, you gauge uh, somewhat behind some pillars. You also see that there's a large mound uh, where a lot, a lot of the treasures pile up a lot of gold coins. Uh, but uh, also on the outside of the cavern, you notice that there's like an old watchtower that's still kind of not entirely crumbled away. Uh, and a lot of okay. the old houses that are still there, the stone foundations, uh, the old walls are still there, even though the roofs have been mostly uh, destroyed away. Okay. Cool. cool. Some, some choice places to hide and to assail our foe. Maha. <laughs> All right. I will end that scry. All right. Um... I believe I can cast Scry as many times as I want with this thing. So I'm going to Scry again. Very well. Uh, is is that true? That is the, the crystal ball from the... Yep, it is the crystal ball. Gotcha. I didn't see a uses per day thing. Oh, wait. I oh, don't know. No, the one that I have doesn't have a... limitation. Yeah, well, there's no, no limitation. Uh, at the same time, it also gets to make a spell save. Failed anyways. <laughs> Wasn't really paying attention. Sleeping, so... Sweet. Um, so yes, I will end that scry, and I will quickly sketch down that symbol as best I can. Okay. Um, I'll just make a note, um, Voldrun's room, I guess. Yeah, Voldrun's, uh, uh, probably more like a arcane uh, seal. I rolled a just for cool. just to reference that later. Okay, I will scry again. Okay, and uh, this time I'm going to scry on one Mr. Tristan Gantz. Good stuff. All right, so as you da, da, da. <clears throat> sit there and you focus in the forest on this crystal ball. Your vision bursts into the sky, breaking through the clear, uh, like just straight into the clear sky because there's no overcast anywhere. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, your sight uh, jumps forward quickly in a flash. You see arid mountains from a sky sparsely covered by white clouds. Your sight jumps forward yet again. You're further into the mountains, thrust to just over 100 feet. You see a great ravine. Uh, you see a fortified stone city, numerous homes and businesses. Uh, you see the city limits have been expanded over time with layers of stone wall and fortifications. Uh, you see ore-bearing mines and tall pillars of smoke rise from the city into the clouds. You're thrust again into a dingy stone inn. Uh, you see blurry patrons drink and eat their voices and laughter kind of muffled. You thrust forward once more uh, through the floorboards. You see Tristan, Aaron, or Corva sitting across from a blurry figure in a dark room. The candlelight offers little to expose his face, and the rest is blurred due to the constraints of the scry. The figure does, however, to appear to be tall and perhaps dragonborn. And then you see, and you, it seems like he just jumped in kind of mid-conversation. You hear Tristan kind of speaking. So that may be so, but these items are difficult to barter for if the seller knows their worth. And you see this uh, individual kind of speaking from the other side there. Just, late is late. 
And you see as uh, Aaron speaks up and she says, Regardless of our lateness, the item's value still stands. And she kind of like, kind of, uh, kind of slams her, her hand on the table. And you see Tristan kind of give her a stern look. And you see some deep laughter through the sharp, uh, through sharp teeth can be heard from across the table. And uh, Tristan arises from his chair and you see him unlock uh, the latches of a strong chest and retrieve a large cloth wrapped object from within. And he places it onto the table and removes the cloth. And upon the table, you see revealed the chromatic bell. Fuck that thing. He says, As promised, I require the location of the hourglass. And you see as uh, the dragonborn individual across the table just kind of like laughs a little bit. So it just says, <laughs> If you help me bring Sovak to his knees. Uh, I heard he's looking for aid since his nights were... Uh, and Tristan just kind of like stops and says, no. A uh, deal is that you show me where the hourglass is. You see Aaron's eyes kind of flash with this blue arcane energy. And then uh, Dragonborn says, fine, fine. Here's the map. And you can kind of see him like throw this uh, scrolled up map on, onto the table. You can find your precious hourglass in Mythborough. And then as you kind of like look around, uh, see what they're doing, you see as... Uh, Tristan kind of just quietly takes the scroll, kind of stuffs it into a satchel at his side, leaves the chest behind. Uh, you see as like these blurry hands reach for the uh, bell and pull it away into the darkness and kind of leave out a different uh, way. Tristan so, makes his... Hmm? Just so you know, I do have true scene with this thing. Very well. So it, it allows you to see absolutely everything in the room with Scry? Yep, it's true sight, up to 120 feet. Oh, nice. Let's see. Oh, yes, but also, just to make his save, fails. Okay. <laughs> Very well, sir. <laughs> nice. So. Sarah Keel here is from the forest. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was that? <laughs> oh, nothing, that's nothing. our Akash. <laughs> so. Yep, everything's fine. You see this uh, red dragonborn. Uh, appears to be tailless. Uh, he's wearing like pretty nice clothes. Uh, his eyes are like the uh, the whites. What would the whites would normally be are like this very very deep red, and the centers, the pupils of his of his eyes appear to be like this kind of uh, almost red stars. Uh, and as he turns and takes the bell and walks away, you can kind of see the clink of like gold chains and platinum and jewels. Uh, he appears to have some sort of a symbol on the back uh, of his coat uh, that seems to uh, be from somewhere within Wildmount, uh, mostly kind of uh, southeast. Uh, uh, appears to be a, a part of some sort of organization. You can kind of gather him to be of some significant importance, but uh, definitely probably criminal. What is the symbol of? Uh, it appears to be of a star with a coin in the center. I can look that up later. Like, ask about it later. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of... It, it, it appears to have uh, some sort of a picture of something in the center. Uh, you gather it's like this many-headed dragon on the coin. Right. So as he leaves view, uh, Tristan and Aaron, they make their way up the stairs. Uh, you can see them kind of making their way outside. Uh, and you see, uh, as you walk outside, uh, the tavern appears to be called the Wooden Serpent. Do 
Do I have an idea of where they might be? Uh, you can make a history check. I guess it'd just be a history check. Well, it's not going to be great. You're not entirely sure, but it's definitely not on Taldor, and it's definitely not on Marquette. It's probably Wild Mount, at, at your best guess. Yeah. Alright, I can move into that as well. That could be really what funny if Congar ran into him. <laughs> uh, okay, I will continue following them for the t- full ten minutes, hoping to get a look at that map that they got. Uh, as you do, uh, you do see what appears to be a kind of old, uh, stained map. Uh, it looks like it's really been through the ringer, uh, been passed around a lot. You see spatters of blood across it, and as, as he kind of makes his way uh, to a, a private uh, room upstairs in the inn, uh, you see the m- map has a, a few locations on it. Uh, namely, uh, some places kind of far up here. Let me take a look. It mostly seems to kind of depict the Rhine Plains uh, up in northern Wildmount uh, across various rivers and uh, further up north uh, around this uh, almost uh, map, these, uh, this set of mountains that are kind of like cupped around this location called Mythborough. It's along an outer coast. And uh, there's a couple other symbols around there as well. Uh, There is something that seems to be written in a language that you might not understand. Uh, Uh, Do you know... Which languages do you know? I know... Common, Draconic, Infernal, and Elven. Okay. So you wouldn't be able to read it. Uh, okay. It does, beside it, appear to uh, depict some sort of an hourglass, uh, kind of regal in it in its design. Uh, it also shows uh, what appears to be some uh, kind of angelic beings, um, kind of around it. Uh, it also shows some of them slain uh, and kind of uh, morphed, or as if the angels have been kind of dissolved into sand and then placed into this hourglass. All right. But your scrying ends at that 10 minutes as they're kind of looking over it and perusing it. Hmm. All right. I will... Take that information for now. I'll put my orb away and I will attune again to the helmet. Okay. And I think my rest will be done after that. Okay. So, you guys all awaken. You guys don't have any exhaustion. Good. And, and you're all good to go to travel. Lobek was the one remaining dragonborn that... Oh no. Who was that? Yeah, Sovak the Shade. Draconian Knight. Yeah, okay. So it wasn't Sovak, but it was someone who knows who Sovak is. Mm -hmm. Very, very curious indeed. Uh, I will walk back into the tent and just, like, be stroking my chin in deep thought. (laughs) You scheming again? I attempt to scare (laughs) him. Okay. Uh, Make a stealth check and attach make a perception check. It's an 11. (laughs) Yeah, attach. You (laughs) definitely, definitely, definitely notice her. It's your choice if you want to act surprised or not. <laughs> I see that she, like, kind of ran to the corner of the tent to, like, jump out at me. And I'll, like, instead of going in right through the door, I'll, like, come from behind her and just, like, scare her instead. Okay. <laughs> I Just be like, 
I'll just try like, to act flip not... up the uh, canvas and I'll be like, boo. Okay. <laughs> Performance of three for not acting scared. I shit myself. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, oh. just, you you scream. You like jump up and down. Uh, <laughs> Cause you didn't, you didn't expect them to, to notice you. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the legendary Adnoserac. <laughs> Excellent attempt, my dear. I'll See, get be... you one day. See, that'd be another good little mini cartoon to animate. <laughs> Too truly true. Anybody hungry? You see, it's uh, hungry enough. Haskin kind of comes over. <sighs> Yeah, I'm a bit hungry. I'm always hungry. <laughs> All right, well, I've got some hearty meals for six, and then uh, some smaller stuff. For I'm watching my figure, I can take the smaller stuff. Yeah. As I'm skin and bones. I'm pretty sure Torm isn't hungry, but I try to offer him some anyway. He just kind of looks at it and takes it and knocks it back. Doesn't really say anything. Cool. Jan uh, kind of comes up behind a Tesh a little bit, like when you're like a little bit away from everybody. Just, so, where were you going? You're gone for a little bit there. Uh, I was just searching ahead. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, all right. And he kind of gives you like a pat on the back. Walks away. Maybe he was taking a poop, okay? The Maybe I was taking a poop. You're right. But yeah. Hold that in. He could he could have went really far and just 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 you know took a poop by himself. I mean, I like Zerakil, that. Zerakil, you feel like eating heavy or light this morning? Well, I guess not morning, but you get you know what I mean. I'll go light. Okay. Everybody else, dig in. And right. We'll get on the way. So I don't, I mark off some of the it. rations you're using Cancel for the right. food. Okay. Okay. For however, however many people that you're feeding. And it's quite good. It's kind of like a uh, chunky tomato soup with nice herbs and additions to it. Delightful. Very rustic indeed. I have this idea with bread and cheese, I feel like would go really good with this. <laughs> yeah, I've had something like that before. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Ah, uh, no, never mind. I go back to mumbling to myself as I clean my pot out. Okay. Can't believe I had a devil's face in this thing. So. I have some news. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to look ahead at the dragon's lair. Uh -huh. Pretty nifty skill. Yes, I am very skillful indeed. Thank you, Condor. <laughs> I roll um, my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like a premonition? Like, do we die? Uh, nothing like that. It's just purely observational. Um, it is not far from the city that we were told about, the City of Ruins, which name escapes me at the moment. Uh, there is a large cave right next to it. Um, obviously this is a ancient dragon, so it is quite large. This is the cavern that he resides in. Uh, there is a few choice places that we can uh, do a battle with him. Um, and I kind of like explain the layout as best I can. The Task tower is holding on every word. Uh, yeah, the tower. The did like, he have a horde? Did he ancient... have a horde? No, Kongar. Unfortunately, he was completely poor. He, I just, uh, all the gold had was accounted for already, and it had a tesh on it. So, no gold that is not mine already that I've claimed, but. I'm sure we can find something for you. Maybe some scales from the corpse? No, I like gold now, sadly. Um, well, I guess we might be able to make some sort of arrangement. That'd be nice. 
<laughs> I appreciate your charity. Uh, I am very generous. <laughs> I can hear the money falling out of you when you walk. As anyway. I was saying, <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are some beasts and other creatures trapped within ice in the lair as well. Uh, I assume they would be dead by this point, but who knows the extent of the magic that a dragon can conjure, so... Um, and yes, as described by uh, Haskin, the rune that was binding him was cracked. Uh, I have a sketch of it, I don't know if you know anything about this kind of stuff, Haskin, and I hand it over. He looks it over. <sighs> no, I'm afraid I don't I mostly uh, know about uh, dragons and other monsters and how they uh, how they behave, but not so much into ancient sealing magic. Mm. Unfortunate. I'll take the piece of paper back and stuff it away. Uh, but yeah, I'll I'll share with them as many details as I can that I saw that were significant, like places to hide, how big the ca cavern was approximately, um, where he, like, sleeps inside of there. Hmm. He sleeps like a bat? Uh, that he does. Huh. Well, at least if we fight him in there, he can't fly too high above us. Like, well, from what you're telling me, the cavern is high, but it's better than him being able to completely escape us at any whim. I don't... There's something about the cavern itself, just the way the frost was acting when I was watching. I don't know if it is safe to fight within there. All right. Um, we can attempt it, but we should be prepared to, if something springs on us... We should flee uh, to the town. Could you take? Could you use your helmet to get us all out of there if we were all within, you know, close enough to you? Uh, potentially. I guess what that'd be that a Mary. Do you think those creatures are dead, or that they're like just frozen, and you know, he just thaws them out when he's hungry, or are they like his little minions, or are they just, you know? Yeah, I'm I'm not certain. I don't know anything about frost dragons. Haskin, do you know anything? Well, actually I do. See what uh these uh white dragons like to do. They're more of the uh hunting types, more uh more cruel. They like to they like the game. So they make their way out of their cavern every now and then they try to find the largest creature they can find and defeat them. Once they have, they freeze them and keep them around as trophies. They collect? Interesting. Yes. All sorts of things. Uh, if not the creature from the battle, then perhaps a, uh, a a token of some sort. Something large. Uh, has a statement. And he doesn't eat them? Ooh, not all the time. Uh, he'll eat the smaller <laughs> ones, but if it's a uh, was deemed to be uh, let's see, uh, a creature worth fighting then he would freeze it and keep it interesting do you well, think he'd I... be able to unfreeze it or is it dead once it's frozen well uh, generally it should be dead once it's frozen uh, I'm not really sure what creature it is though So I don't really want to end up frozen on his cave wall you guys uh, I'm sure that won't happen. My jacket. Seriously. It's assured that you would look fabulous on his wall. On anyone's wall. Dear Sinra. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there. Why did we agree to this again? I think we're crazy. Well, you know, we've killed dragons before, but this thing's more of a, a predator. Well, I guess all dragons are kind of predators, but this guy really likes the hunt. So, I guess let's give him some sport. We got to do this for Hask, and he was good enough to come along with us. Who knows well, how many people could have died by putting off this fight. For Haskin, hand in the air. 
He takes Everyone's out his sword, kind of like puts it up into the air. <laughs> hanging there alone. My, All right, my eyes go wide out of excitement. Uh, she's a sword. I'll put my fist up, I guess. <laughs> Awkwardly. You put it up late, and he already put his sword away. <laughs> And just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> did we count to three next time we're gonna do that? Like, <laughs> luck bringers. Good idea. Just follow the crazy eyes. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um. So, are we all? How far away are we from this cave? Like a day's walk, or? Uh, you're a fair distance away. Not uh, even sure really where it is. Uh, It'll be a test that kind of leads the way. Well, do you have that map still? Yes. And I, like, I point to where the city was, which is, if you're looking at the Zenvik Mountain map. So, it's in that, like, little, little cove kind of thing, almost. There should the be a ruined like city. It's... Seems like the weather's gonna be uh, rough. Oh, most indubitably. Hmm. I guess but... let's let's get these resources to the town up ahead, and we'll take it from there. Okay. So, as you guys continue your way down the glass walk, uh, making your way through the Vesper Timberland, uh, the forest is generally quite quiet, still. You're, you notice that Torm's presence seems to have this kind of effect on the nature around him. There's not even bird singing. Uh, they seem to be kind of avoiding that. making noise. Uh, but by the end of your first day, you managed to get probably about here on the glass walk, right where it says glass. Ass. Yes, ass. We're in the ass of it now. You're more in the ass of the ass than anything. Ass of ass, ass is glass. Uh, hmm. As you guys are walking, do you guys do anything? Uh, uh, do you guys uh, discuss anything? Do you, uh, uh, what are you guys doing when you s start setting up camp? Not help. Play tag. All right. Who are you playing tag with? I, I assume everybody, yep. everybody is, uh, voluntold that they're playing tag, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Adno is kind of like just dashing around as you guys are like kind of trying to build up this large tent that Diamond Dell left for you guys. Uh, yet Adno kind of comes up right behind uh, Zero Kill at one point, just goes ping, right on the back of his plate mail. Ow! <laughs> she takes off. <laughs> um, are we supposed to catch her? Man, Zero Kill, you're like currently holding up one of these important poles for the for the tent. I think that's how the game is supposed to be played. <laughs> I'll just keep putting the tent together. Okay. I do it again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you rush back. <laughs> ding, right, on the, right on his back. You take <laughs> off really fast like a cat. Bogar comes back from the bushes. Oh, wait. After, like, still leaves stuck to his feet. 15 to go up a tree. Okay. Uh, well, that would be more athletics than anything. Oh. 11 to go up a tree. Okay, yeah. So you manage to, like, you kind of, like, you run off to the tree like like a cat with the zoomies, and you, like, get to the tree, and you kind of, like, go to, like, pretty much half speed, like, trying to find branches and stuff, and, like, going up the tree. But you're, you're making Arms your way up there. <laughs> yeah. And Zara Kelly, you're still trying to, like, get the, the tent to go, and uh, actually make a... Uh... <laughs> Make a dexterity save really quick. Just to not be surprised by the second, like, on, on your back there to not let go of the pole. There'd just be a DC 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you manage to hold it firm and steady. Sinra, you're, like, knocking down the pegs around the tent. Yep. Jan's kind of helping out on the inside, looking like laying out everything. 
And Bro. you're halfway up the tree, you see Zerakil didn't come for you. You're like covered in pine needles. You got some sap on your hands. I stop midway, and I'm gonna try and like cat jump out. So that's gonna be acrobatics to cat jump out, and it's 27. Okay. So it's gonna be graceful at least. I'm not gonna fall on my face. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you see, uh, like, uh, below you is a Tesh and Congar. They're kind of walking around Hask and is kind of, uh, kind of walking near Torm, kind of, uh, kind of How keeping close? a side on him. Uh, Tash and Congar are probably, like, just below the tree, probably like 10 or 8 feet or so. Oh, so I can't jump far enough to jump on them. You can try. I mean, you rolled a really freaking high acrobatics. I'll say that's allowed. Okay, I'm going to jump on Congar. Okay. So you... Uh, Congar, you're like looking over at Zerakiel and uh, CS there. Everyone's like trying to like get things going. Uh, but I want to like leapfrog Congar. So like jump on him, jump off, and be like, hey, you it! Okay. And then run away again. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, these two feet just like slap down onto your shoulders. And you're just like blinded from the cloth that she's wearing. And then you uh, she just like jumps off in front of you and turns around. What the hell? Adno, you're you're totally gonna hurt yourself. I'm bored. We've been walking forever. Play with me. What do you want to do? It's called tag. And then I run up to Haskin and I tag him. But didn't you just tag me? Do I misunderstand tag. how tag works? So you, you run up and you and you tag Haskin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and. Uh... <laughs> As, as you go to run away, he quickly slaps your hand back and says, You're it. <laughs> uh. I stop and stare at him. And I say, Game on. So it and is. And I try to... Hmm, what is he again? He's big. Yeah, he's uh, he's just medium in size, but he's, he's technically bigger than you, yeah. Mm -hmm. I try to go for, like, the back of the knee and run away. Okay, give me a sec here. Where run towards Kongar, so then if he... He might hit Kongar before he hits me. Okay. So he's kind of doing this thing where he's, like, waiting for you to hit him, and then he's just, like, fast tag your hand back. So he's going to make a, a dex check against your AC to do that. Just with his hand. Okay. 17. That one's not going to do it, though. Uh, so as you go to uh, tag him, you do, and he goes to, like, kind of, like, fling out with his hand at you, uh, realizes that he was, like, holding uh, his breakfast and kind of, like, whips it because he used the wrong hand. And he just gets Don't waste my food! And just comes after you. <laughs> Full dash. Go hide behind Conkar. All right. Yeah, you go high behind Kongar, and he's gonna like try to like jump behind and uh, tag you back. <laughs> Eighteen. We're all playing. Oh, he hits me. Okay. I grab Kongar's ass. Tag, you're it. You see Haskin like flip jumps. backwards or try to. No. Kongar jumps towards Haskin excitedly because. Oh my god. Just. Okay. So you're gonna jump. To how are you? How are you jumping towards Haskin? She literally, like, old woman groped my ass. I, like, dive. I'm not even, wow. like... Wow. Okay, so, uh, Haskin tried to be all cool and do some backflips backwards to get away. <laughs> but he rolled incredibly low. So he just kind of, like, jumps and flops backwards onto his back. It's just, oh, <coughs> winded. And then Kongar is like, Ugh! and just, like, jumps and pff, belly flops onto his stomach. <laughs> Are you sure it's stomach? He's pretty tall. He's wearing a cloak. Uh, roll... <laughs> Might not be in the stomach. <laughs> screw it. I'll just roll a d6. You're terrible. No, screw it. You're, you're, pretty, you're a pretty heavy bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of large. How, how much is your weight? We'll roll a d6 per 100 pounds. I Ooh. was 450. <laughs> All right, 46. Is it not rolling? No. Nope. Not yet. OK. 
Come what on. What is happening? Is just being slow? Possibly. It does it sometimes. Might have to do it the old-fashioned way. Oh, oh. well, that touch uh, got it. 15 will. damage. Yeah. All right. So you land right on <clears throat> Haskin, and he is winded. <laughs> and he's like... <laughs> Uh, is he okay? <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. And I start trying to get back up. Okay, yeah, yeah. you get you get up, and he like kind of like lays there for a moment, just kind of. When you're ready, kind of whenever you're ready, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> What's Adno doing? Throwing, well, cackling my ass off. <laughs> Adno is hurt. Come here. <laughs> and uh, throwing snowballs at Zerkio. Oh, okay. So, Zerika, you, you're, you've almost completely got the, the pole all set down. Uh, Zinner has all the pegs down. Uh, now, uh, Zinner just has to, like, go up to the pole and, like, fasten it to make sure it stays in place properly. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Adno, make a, a dexterity-based attack. So, with proficiency as you whip the snowball. So, that's a d20 plus my dex? Yeah, it'll just be a d20 plus your dex. You would be proficient in snowballs. It would be an improvised weapon, so. 13. 13, yeah. <laughs> uh, it just tings on the back of your armor, Zerakiel, and kind of like the, the snow just kind of like drains down. Join us. I turn my head. <laughs> I point to attach. Yes. When does Atesh ever use snow? <laughs> oh, uh, I'll cast telekinesis. <laughs> <laughs> and I will gather a huge bunch of snow and I'll throw a snowball at Gonfire. Yes! Okay. Uh, like, how huge? Like, a large sized amount of snow? Well, so telekinesis like can lift. <laughs> Uh, oh fuck! Here we go. <laughs> just, just so you know, it can lift one thousand pounds of something. Okay. I'm not going to collect one thousand pounds of snow because that would take a long time. It so would. I'm just going to like. I'll oh, grab. you Fairly murder Kong. A snowball, <laughs> yes. uh, like a, a snowman-sized snowball. Yeah. Gotcha. So just like Face like torso two or feet, head. <laughs> like two feet wide, kind of thing. Okay. So big, but not like huge. <laughs> yeah. So. Are you, are you being stealthy about it? Are you like, trying to get the snowball from like a certain direction? As, or soon just... as, as soon as he says that thing, I'll just like kind of snap my fingers and I'll like use my mind to collect a little bit of snow and I'll just like whip it right at him. <laughs> yeah, so you see like this like melty snow in the side there. And you just go, it just all comes together and then you go and you snap your fingers again. It goes flying towards Kongar. Uh, I'll oh, say make a, make a spell attack. Uh, Rain spell sure. attack. Where is... I thought I had a... I'm just going to throw a firebolt because it'll be the same thing. Yeah, it's just okay. a d20 plus a rain spell attack. Yep. Oh. 14. I don't think that hits Kongar. Nope. Nope. Yeah. It goes... You, you duck Kongar. It goes flying. hits the tree in the back. And it goes... Poof, and you see the whole tree kind of shake and all this like snow just like breaks loose and starts falling down. <laughs> it hit it with a fair amount uh, of force. Oh, I missed, and I'll get another one. <laughs> <laughs> Kongar, while he's trying to gather, Kongar lobs, just scoops up some from the ground and just lobs it at him. Okay, with the amount of time it takes him to telekinesis another one, you're still kind of like gathering snow, like with this like look of just pure concentration, kind of frustration, like, I'm going to get him. <laughs> Uh, so I'll, I'll attach I'll allow you to make one more spell attack before you can get a, a snow some snow off. Hit. Okay, oh god! I'll do it. Oh <laughs> god! <laughs> I thought I was all fucking suave, like dodging, like just dodging it. And yeah, with whatever. the telekinesis, that'll do a d6 of waste of, of cool damage. <laughs> oh <Ouch. sure>. <laughs> 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 uh <-huh. laughs> Yeah. So it just cracks across the top of your head, and it's cold. And Hassan kind of like, looks up from the get like is like starting to get up from the ground as you're doing this. He's like he like looks at you and says, uh, "Konga, there's uh, some blood on your head." It's fine. And he just kind of like 
gets out of the way a little bit. <laughs> I'll just like, <laughs> uh, I'll raise my hands both up into the sky and like a hundred tiny little snowballs will just oh, start oh, floating around on. me. <laughs> Before that happens, Kongar gets his shot off now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so you finish gathering your snowball, a little bit more intent now. And it's just a dexterity, right? Yeah, just uh, add your dex modifier. <laughs> so, <laughs> you go to I'm a little concussed. And you Can see I just like face. throw it back at him? <laughs> oh god, that would be fucking beauty. <laughs> sure. Yeah, so you whip it and it goes like straight for your face. Uh, attach and you stop it with telekinesis and you throw it back at him to make, a stealth, make another spell attack. <laughs> Alright, I'm done. Yeah. Fuck this. I think, <laughs> I'm gonna help set up the tent. No, it Fuck just you misses Congar. Like, Congar, you see it coming back and you, like, bash it away with your Titan Stone knuckle. I'm gonna go help with the tent. Screw this. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want to play, Congar? And then I'll I'll make, like, a hundred snowballs float in the air. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they all just, like, you just see it, like, it's like a backwards kind of rain of snowballs. It's like all these snowballs just start to r come up from the ground and go into the sky as you see the ground just become just dirt and muck and like wet uh, grass uh, as they're all like floating in the air above the pine trees like, uh, over the road. I feel like it might be more fun to just use our hands and, you know, try that, but... Okay, you know, and you know, I'll like place the snowball in my hand and I'll throw it at Conger. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you just throw it by hand. Just add your decks. So just a dexterity check. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> right between the eyes. And yeah, it like sticks right between your eyes and like sticks there and like half of it sloughs off and the rest like slides down your face over your nose and down your chin just onto the ground. Okay, now I'm just impressed. As you're laughing, do you drop concentration telekinesis? Uh, I'll make a snowman that's in the shape of Congo. Okay. So you take then... all your snowballs that are in the sky currently, and they all kind of coalesce into this like really pretty looking uh, Congar snow statue. Okay, I can get into this, and I go to start like boxing it. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll make it move and like just like a dummy kind of thing, just like back, up, back away. Yeah. Yeah. You're not moving the arms and hands or anything. It's just like you're moving it over like a chess piece. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Kongar, make. Uh, what are you? You're just gonna fight it. Okay. Make a uh, just a strength attack. So d20 plus your strength mod. Yep. So easily enough. Uh, it do it tries to dodge <laughs> the first time, and uh, you do like a quick left hand left hook on it. <laughs> destroying the head and then pff, crushing the the body and just shatters into like just a puddle of snow on the ground man oh, i bet hum. we could i bet <laughs> we could yeah. oh come on not like you even got wet from that <laughs> and zarekiel you was... finished putting the tent up <laughs> thank you zarekiel <laughs> i brush my hands clean how many nails did it take? <laughs> <laughs> Zinner was taking care was taking care of the of the pittance. <laughs> and Jan was fastening throw... the, the nails and everything, <laughs> if if required. In the middle of all that I tried to throw one at um Oh my god, I forgot her name. Zinra. But it was a three, so I I terribly missed it. Kinda just went like two feet in front of me. <laughs> three, huh? So yeah, you uh, kind of sneak around, and uh, Zinra make a perception check. Okay. Gonna beat a thirteen meter beat. Come on, roll twenty. Just me, or is it like unusually slow? Seems to be working for me. Yeah, it's working for me. Me too. There you go. Wow, you got it. So you, you did see her coming up from behind uh, as you were like knocking in the last pittens under the ground. And then you see her like pick up this snowball and like this look of just absolute glee on her face like she's gonna get you. And the snowball just goes f flying 
and uh, just hits the tent and like can make, breaks across. Can, I make, can, I make... can you make what? Oh, you don't even acrobatics. What was that, Zinra? I said, can I make an acrobatics so she doesn't hit me? Oh, you don't have to. She missed. Oh. You can okay. make an acrobatic so that you grab it and throw it back at her if you want. Oh, yeah, that'd that's be, a good idea. That'd be, a, that'd be another dex check to try and grab it. Not that's didn't need a to save, but it's still pretty good. Uh, yeah, Sorry. so you like you grab uh, the snowball before it hits the tent in your hand. Uh, as if, and uh, Ada, you didn't even see her like looking at you at all. <laughs> I'm so, like, giddy with happiness that everybody's playing that I just, like, put my arms okay. out and be like, Hit me, baby! <laughs> Alright, you gonna throw it back at her? Yeah, I did, didn't I? No, not yet. No, that, that was, was just to catch it. So it's, it's just, it's not a save. Because you're not saving against an exploding fireball. You're just, you're throwing it. So just click Dexterity. Like, am I blind? Where is it? It's when your score. It's your dexterity score. The big, like, number four or whatever on the side? Yeah, it should just say dexterity. There you go. Does that hit your AC? Yeah. Alright. Right in the middle of the chest. Just... I fall straight backwards. Yeah, and <laughs> there's no snow on the ground, so you just fall into, like, like cold mud. Oh, and I can't breathe because I'm old. Yeah. You killed that, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right near Attach and Attach, you just you see it like splash into the mud and like a little bit goes on your cloak. <sighs> Use my telekinesis to <laughs> whip away the wire. Okay. Yeah, you use it to grab the bit your cloak and just like <laughs> like flapping it off. It just lay there. Mm -hmm. So, eventually, you guys uh, choose to rest for the night. Uh, what are your watches? I'll go first. Okay. I can pick second and third, so then everybody can get more rest. Okay. Alright. So, Kongar, you're kind of up on your own for the most part. Uh, Zinra can choose to rest on whatever those uh, watches she wants. And, uh, Conger, what are you doing on your watch? I'm gonna make snow angels, okay? I'm, uh... Okay. There are no... There's no snow in, like, a, quite a large area around you guys. I'm gonna try to get Torm to... To, you know, make some snowballs. Make a snowman. Okay, make a persuasion check. Build a snowman. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a snowman. It's a mud man. <laughs> He kind of thinks for a moment and you see his eyes kind of squint and gets up and just says, Okay. <laughs> and gets up and kind of walks over to where uh, your uh, murdered snowman was. Uh, and he kind of like starts like piling it up. And you see as his hands are getting in, uh, trying to grab the snow that's around there because there's like no snow left. You start to grab like large heaps of mud and dirt and it's becoming like this snow mud man. Cool. It starts to kind of like form it out, and it it's fairly humanoid. It's, it's not too bad. Uh, he's not making like full balls or anything. He's like making like rounder areas uh, uh, of the of the body as it as it goes up. Uh, and Zinra, uh, you're pretty you, good at this. If if you wanted to make uh, snow angels, you would have to go farther for it, or you could just use the mud, because <laughs> Atesh has mostly taken all of the snow from the area to make that snowman. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna take my fancy jacket off though, and I'm just gonna do it in my like my undergarments. Okay. And I'm gonna lay down on the mud, and I'm gonna make some snow angels. You're gonna lay, on, mud angels. lay down, lay down the mud, and make some snow angels. Yeah, some mud angels. Okay, yeah. So you like lay down in the middle of the muddy road, uh, and you just start <laughs> just making mud angels. I'm my arms, and my feet together, and mm -hmm. like. God, you guys, it feels so good. Yeah. What temperature is it right now? <laughs> uh, it's like it's probably about minus eleven or so. So it's pretty cold. 
Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna join me? You're doing uh, a wonderful job. <laughs> okay, well, my nips are freezing. I better put this damn jacket back on. So I get up and, like, kind of let it drip off and... I mean, you're covered in mud. So put the yeah. jacket on now, the inside of your jacket's getting covered in mud. <laughs> Is there any water anywhere around? It's in the mud. <laughs> I mean, everyone's yeah. like carrying like water for drinking purposes and things. I still gonna put my jacket over top. You put your jacket over top. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you put your nice like a very expensive kind of snow leopard jacket over top. Mm -hmm. Just like kind of like just <laughs> against you. Just... It's warmer though. It's nice. Yeah, I'm... it is really nice and warm, you guys. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> I believe you. Hug. I totally believe you. On my back and oh my belly. Oh. And then I kind of saunter over and I'm gonna I've never really go... seen that much green skin before. That's something else. <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, sit by the tent. Is that what it's like when people see me? <laughs> Except for your paler and chubbier, yes. <laughs> it's full of tattoos. What? <laughs> what? I start looking down at my gut. Maybe I need to relax a little bit on my uh, smash pot. Oh, no, no. Continue eating. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys end up resting. You guys do your watches, and they're uneventful. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys end up taking off again, uh, traveling farther down the road. Uh, you end up making your way to about right here. Actually, I'll push you up a bit more here. Nope. Let's say you make it uh, about to there, to be fair. You assume by one more day of travel, you guys will make it to Moldiri. Uh, but during this course of travel, I would like you guys, oh, somebody to roll a weather check, please. I want to. Do it. You do it. Oh, no. All right. Let's see what that is. That was spot on. Oh, gully dokily. That sounds confident. So as you guys get up and you got, uh, you see as you're walking down the glass walk and uh, there's no snow, uh, it becomes slightly more overcast. Uh, the sky is a lot more gray. It's not like big puffy billowy clouds. It's not like it's going to snow or anything. But the temperatures start to drop like crazy. Uh, hmm. You gather it's probably like like minus 30, minus 32. It's just one of those days. Um, so who all has cold gear? Everyone? I was going to ask about this, because we never did cover Atesha's cold gear stuff. Um, but he definitely uh, would have come north with cold gear. Yeah, I, I would say that you and Jam would have came with cold gear for sure. And we talked about this when we were in that uh, nice... Yeah, I have Bobcat. Yeah, yep. like we went and bought... Yeah, that's where Zenra got her coat. Yeah, I know. I'm just making sure, like, I, I can't remember who all got it. I think everyone, like everyone, would have some at least. Yeah, I got some. Okay, uh, we went through one bad trip, and after that, everybody got some. Yeah. So, due to how cold it is, there's still gonna be a saving throw, but it's not gonna be as high as if you didn't have cold gear. Uh, so, um, I'm going. One sec. One sec. One sec. Okay. What is the that spell? Injured elements. No, what's the one in... That's the Pathfinder one. I'm not sure what 5th edition is called. Oh, it is. Inter Elements. Oh, no, that's Homebrew. Do you know what the name of the spell is? That's like any extreme cold and extreme heat is... I think that was just a resistance type of thing. 
Wait, so would this be considered cold damage? No, it's not cold damage. It's cold effect. Okay. Okay, that's what I had to. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'd like everybody to make a Constitution saving throw. The DC is fifteen. Why you gotta do this to us? <laughs> nice. Okay, and I've got a sevens. Central sevens. Nope. Twenty one. I have a. I have ten. I have advantage on saving throws. Oh. Okay. Against what? All saving throws? Yeah, it says necklace of protection advantage on all saving throws. Well, la di da for Very you. Well. <laughs> right. I can't find anything. Uh, Constitution, you said? Uh huh. So, Atash, you have like zero cold gear? I have some cold gear, but not extreme cold gear, I guess. Be honest, are you standing near me? Hmm. Uh, probably if we're all traveling together. Oh, I also gain a bonus equal to my intelligence modifier. So plus three, so I'm a 13. Give me a second. And, if you're, and I, you're near their keel. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's all effects and not just magical effects that you have saving throws against. Oh, the necklace of protection. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Let me know and I can update my sheet. Oh, it's based off the... Gotcha. Just called a necklace of protection on an amulet. It says it so it says advantage on it all. That's it doesn't say plus one to AC and saving throws while wearing the ring? Uh, it says plus one to AC and then advantage on saving throws. Is what I have written down. I see. Do I have it written down wrong? Uh, I thought I'd base it off the ring of protection, therefore it would have been just a plus one to saving throws and plus one to uh, AC. But I will allow that. Oh, cold allow resistance. It. Sorry, keep going. Well, allow it this time, and I should change my wording, or allow it always. I'll leave it. I, I, that's probably okay. what I had said before. Okay. I'm done. Uh, so cold resistance would prevent me from uh, being super cold. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, as soon as the weather turns, then, I would like to switch out my staff for my Staff of Frost. Ah, very well. Yeah, then and you would not be affected by the cold at all. Yeah, I'll attune to that as we walk. Okay. So you start to kind of like feel the, the bite of the cold, and then it starts to immediately just go away as soon as you are attuned to that staff. But is your staff the same as my potions, where it's resistance to cold damage, not cold effects, or is yours just cold? If, it, if it's resistance Mine. to cold, then yeah, you are, uh, you do not get, uh, you're not affected by cold weather. Okay, because mine says resistance to cold damage, which is different, correct? No, I, I would say, yeah, it, it it would make you resistant to the cold weather as well. Okay, I yeah. pop a potion. Okay. Pop a potion. Yeah, you guys watch as Adam just like with her thumb pops the cork off of Wonder Bottles and just like starts chugging back this kind of clearish potion. Oh my god, what you got there, Adno? Not something you want. Kind of tastes like peppermint. Oh, fun. <laughs> How fitting for cold. Mm -hmm. All right, but everybody else who failed uh, will take one point of exhaustion. 
And if you take any cold damage in this weather, it'll be a plus two damage. So as you guys continue on for the night, the cold is not let up, and you assume it'll probably be there uh, through your camping. Uh, so as you guys are kind of like setting up, uh, setting up camp and everything, uh, Zerakil, are, are you still uh, making the tent and everything? So no one else is doing it. I will. I'll help. Okay. <laughs> Do I want to be a fucking dick? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I go inside and try to hold it up from the center so everybody can put the post in, but I'm short, so it's not really doing anything. Okay. Yeah. But it's not on the ground. No. Nope. It seems like everybody's like kind of like taking the time to put it together. It's, it seems to be working quite well. Uh, attaches just kind of out there, just kind of like chuckling alone to himself, kind of thinking about funny things. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I mean, when else would I be able to be such an awesome person? I'm going to go over to where they're struggling to put up the tent in uh, the cold, cold ass weather. And I'm just going to like take my finger and I'm going to like put it up to my lips and I'm just going to whisper something quietly. Okay. And then I'm going to reach out and just start tearing down reality and like in a straight line all the way to the ground. And then I'll open it and there will be a door there. And Hassan kind of like leans over a little bit to take a look. So, where does that lead? Same place as your uh, sisters? My sisters? Uh, hmm. uh, oh, yes. Something like that. And I'll open the door, and there will be a magnificent mansion inside. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, so you open up and Haskin goes inside. Yeah, you really have really been busy. Nice and kind of cozy. Very nice. It's uh, just for everyone to kind of understand what this kind of space is. It looks pretty much like the mansion where we killed Gazri Obashki. Uh, I don't think Zinro was there. No. Actually. Uh, it's like this. It's like. It looks like that. It's just like a nice, really nice villa. Uh, but it's like decked to the nines in gold and silver and like it's way too much. It's like your eyes hurt a little bit from just like walking in here. It's like Trump's estate. Have you ever seen that before? <laughs> <laughs> Show off. <laughs> it's very ostentatious. Um <laughs> What what do your servants look like? Um uh, Hmm. They're very spiritual and ethereal. Yeah. They have a color and a, a form. There will be uh, men and women, very hot, all different shapes <laughs> and sizes to please anyone. Yep. Uh, dressed <clears throat> like very minimal. Agar's blushing. And he walks around wearing nothing all the fucking time. They, they, they don't have, have like any specific form. They, they have their like, they're just like clay, essentially. But ethereal, like, ghostly, spiritual type figures. Yeah, They have, like, they have the shapes that you would almost, like, hey, that's a nice ass, but you're kind of, like, you look to, like, get more detail, and it's, like, not really there, you know? Yeah. It's... I hate when that happens. It's all just suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys all kind of, like, all just your suggestion. tent. Uh, well, I assume you're, uh, Reality terror is inside the tent. <laughs> yes, it is right inside the tent. Right. So you guys kind of ditch that stuff and Torm just like watches as you guys go through that terror. Oh no, I'm gonna hang out with Torm if he can't fit. He could probably fit. If he wishes to come inside, then by all means. Torm, don't don't sit out there by yourself. Come on. He like looks at his hands, and as like the wind's blowing, you can kind of see like frost starting to build up on his skin, and starting to, like get kind of red and rash, and kind of turn a little bit more bluish, I guess. And you can kind of see like this weird kind of smile on his face as he's kind of like looking at it and kind of like like uh, grasping his his hands and, Arm, and stuff. I, I go over and I grab his hand, and you you just keep standing there like just. He seems to be enjoying the cold. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead him. Come with your friends, man. Come with, come with some good company. 
and he just kind of like stays there like a like a big statue and just kind of like shakes his head and just kind of like just like doesn't want to he just disagrees he's gonna stay outside well somebody's got to stay with him all right guys you're, have fun you're not invulnerable ali will stay with him yeah you can leave the door open and if he stays in the doorway we will at least be able to see him that's fair and the temperature difference for you inside the door will be much better than sleeping in the cold. Mm-hmm. It's very I can't argue inside. with that logic. All right. As long as, you know, we can keep an eye on him. So there's all these servants floating around. Uh, and they're just like dancing for you guys and you know kind of like show off a little bit and but very tastefully for the most part and uh, yeah you guys walk around you see like a beautiful like ridiculously a long dinner table like probably almost 40 feet long just like rows of chairs plates all set out uh, why do you even goblets. need this stuff uh <laughs> You see, like, various kind of uh, nondescript paintings. Uh, you see nice tapestries. You see, like, beautiful kitchens and nice bedrooms and stairs First, that lead up and down. Above the main seat of the table, there is a giant picture of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a <laughs> raven. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you look like in, in the painting, Atesh? Oh, my horns are pulled back and they're covered in gold <laughs> and I have like an oversized fur coat <laughs> and like I'm holding a pipe that I'm not even smoking. <laughs> just, like... and pipe in one hand with his hand on like a cane on the other one and there's like a raven standing on his cane. Yep. And yep. A nice. fire raven. He's oh, all yeah. like, yeah. It's a <laughs> phoenix raven. Nice. Yeah, the Faven, as it's called. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks regal and just heroic. Like a hundred gold rings on each finger. <laughs> just like, it's it's all, it's too much. <laughs> Bling down to your belly button. Yep. Yep. And a crown. Oh no, your, your horns are gold. Never mind. And one of my nipples is showing. Slightly... <laughs> His favorite nipple. <laughs> you drew on hair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Very tasteful. <laughs> so, what do you do inside the magnificent mansion? And there's like there's just like a slight awkward. bit of ambience, uh, music from Marquette. So, oh nice. I so, feel unbearably awkward, and I sit very still, and I just kind of like face the doorway, waving at Torm. It's it's like some light Moroccan belly dancing music. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, and uh, so Congress sitting there awkwardly uh, watching Torm, and Adno's outside with Torm. Uh, what's everyone else doing inside? I'm going to plunk down at the table. Mm-hmm. And pull out that bottle of wine that I was drinking yesterday. But you can get free wine in there. Oh, oh please. Have- don't, oh, don't drink that, my yeah, dear. Uh... Here, and I pull out a bottle that is 100 years aged in the finest cellars. Yeah, yeah, it's got like some nice kind of artis- art- artisanal dust on the outside of the bottle. Is there any food in here that I can munch on? And I'll just like snap my fingers and the table that's like 40 feet long is filled with a banquet for 100 people. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. see there's all these like the uh, yeah. these hands kind of like appear, these spectral hands from the services. Just... <laughs> uh, <laughs> create a bunch of food on the table i just uh pull out a chair and i plunk my butt down and i start munching away and drinking the wine and yeah oh all of your favorite food is on there Shit. yes my god why haven't we come here before you guys and Look Tasker just kind of looks up from the table he's not even sitting down yet. he's just like yeah, at the at the doorway to the dinner room he's like yeah i wonder why he didn't uh do that our first night well, it wasn't nearly cold enough. 
I suppose. And he comes and sits down and kind of like gets a little bit cherry picky with whatever's on the table. Starts filling up a plate. Uh, Zerika, what are you doing? I am perusing the booze stock. Oh, all kinds. Uh, various wines and whiskeys and rums, and they all have like the same label, but with different years on them. They all have uh, a Tash's face on them. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's, it, it's, the, it's the same face that is like uh, kind of copy pasted from the painting on each bottle. Like the oh, awkward my. smile smiling at you like, mm, oh my. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like a spectrum as you walk down the bottles. It's like, uh, it's like uh, one of those moving picture things, but it's just like each bottle is like a slightly different pose from a Tash. Back. I, I swing over to where Zerakiel is, and I'd be like, this one, this one I think is the best for you. And I hand him a bottle of whiskey with me, like, basically twerking on it. <laughs> <laughs> or would you like this one? You see, like, the twerk, like, the up and down twerk of, like, on each bottle. <laughs> this one, this one, this one. <laughs> and, like, keep flipping them back and forth. <laughs> I just grab one and Look in the oh, bottle. Yeah. Uh, Jan's going around. He's like kind of like brushing his hands across all the bottles. And he's like, you can kind of like see him like pocketing a bunch and putting them into his backpack and things. Give him a smile. Like, take as much as you want. I think I will. You have way more than anybody could ever drink. And I want to bring some for the road. And maybe some of these as well. He's just like grabbing a bunch of food and things. Like, taking a couple bites. Just a, just a couple bites. And he <laughs> starts putting all the rest in his pocket and things. Uh, I'll swing over to where Conkar is, like, sitting, I guess? Yep. Uh, are you on the at the table? Or are I'm you hanging just, like... out. I grabbed a chair, brought it over to the door, and I'm just sitting there, like, waving at Torm and making faces at him and trying to, like, kind of just Mount. reach him. You can see as he keeps, like, uh, kind of, like, flexing and grasping his hand open and close like that skin is starting to crack from the cold and you see like it's starting to bleed but the blood is starting to freeze on his hands and he just seems to be so interested in it yeah i don't like this at all i can't even take any of this in i'm really fucking worried about tor <laughs> Well, unfortunately, there's not much we can do with that at the moment. For now, I'm keeping him... Well, even if he doesn't know it right now, I'm going to keep him some company. Got a nice place here. It's uh, it's kind of ridiculous. Thank you. I like the ridiculous. Yeah, um, it, it, suits, it suits you. There's a word for this that uh, I've heard. I, uh, uh, it'll come to me. I don't know. <laughs> Here, Kongar, uh, a small token of my appreciation. And I like wave, and some of my ethereal servants will bring up a small cart of a bunch of dishes under the cloche glasses things. Um, Kongar should recognize them immediately as all the best, finest meals that he's made us. So, you had your weird people things make my food so you had a taste of home and they're all in like Pretty really much. fine gourmet like dishes and things wow hey as my best first as time i can them. remember <laughs> them anyway um i thought a nine course meal down memory lane <laughs> okay i can take a break from staring at whatever the fuck torm's doing for this you see as uh the entire table is cleared in the dining room as the servants are to bring out like each course for you guys uh, each time you finish one. Yeah, and we go down, go down the list of Congar's finest meals. The uh, the dragon hot wings are there for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those were Atesh's favorite. And the honey baked ham. Actually, Atesh was the one that was very like, okay, fine, you need to cut up some fucking dragon. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> uh food. Bringing friends together. <laughs> Bacon beer. Quotation friends. 
Bacon beer. Oh yeah, of course, bacon beer. Yeah, each of you guys get uh, this kind of like uh, into individual person's uh, frosty cask that is kind of set up on like a really nice little uh, kind of uh, cask shelf uh, to the side. It's already tapped for you, so you can like fill up probably like uh, five or six ales from a frosty cask yourself. Uh, there's like a, like frosty tankards that are there for you to fill up uh, the ale with. Excellent. Well then, I don't think I've ever even seen anything like this before. Um, and then uh, just to kind of wrap up everything about the match, because I don't know how long we want to spend on it. Uh, kind of just along the sides, past the like, there's a hall that's kind of surrounds the main dining area, and there's each a door to each room for one of you. Most of you guys, the room is uh, as close to what I can remember your room being in the uh, Keep Out Keep. Uh, a little bit, obviously, much more luxurious, like three times the size, poster beds and everything. But like, it's kind of set out the same way. Do you um, tell us this? No, this is what you'll find when you go to sleep. Oh, okay. Just to kind of get there. Um... Zinra's room, since I don't know which one it is, uh, is basically a copy of Adno's, uh, but there are two mirrors in that room. Uh, one of them shows the what she looks like now, and one shows an approximation of an elvish lady when she Aww. looks into it. Of course, I stand in front of that other one. So I'm still... <laughs> Yeah. What's yeah. that? I'm still at the table stuffing my face, so I haven't seen my yeah. room yet. Not yet. Yeah. But so. uh, that's fabulous. Good job. Uh, so what do you what do you guys do currently at this table and everything? I eat until I can't eat anymore, and then I sit and wait and stare at the food, and then when I almost feel <laughs> like I can fit more, I eat. I eat more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. You start to kind of feel like you have the itis a little bit, like you're gonna get gonna fall asleep from <laughs> eating too much food. Uh, Jan's there; he's kind of like just uh, at, at one part of the table. They're kind of like picking and eating, like just just to, until he's comfortably full, uh, and yeah, just kind of drinking away and enjoying everybody's company. And Hassan's kind of doing the same. But eventually, Hassan gets a little bit too tipsy, kind of gets up to. Uh, turn him for the night. Jan does the same. Yeah, I think I'm going to push up from the table and I've got like a serious buzz going on here. I'm going to take my bottle of wine with me and a plate. Just Is there like chicken or like something that has a big leg that I can just stick on a big plate and just take with me to my bedroom? You see, as one of the servants come out, uh, this big, burly, uh, almost like, uh, like a, almost like a giant uh, handsome half uh form uh, comes over with this pl little plate, this silver plattered plate, uh, and there's just like a, a half a leg of chicken. Yeah, I'll have that drumstick. Thank you, and I just slap it down on my plate <laughs> and uh, take my bottle of wine. And if you kind people could just point me in the direction of my bedroom chambers, that'd be fabulous. To the left, three down. Okay. Uh, to the left, to the left. Yeah, so as you walk in, you see, like, the, this nice room. Uh, it's fairly well kept, and as you walk past this one mirror, you see yourself, you walk past the second mirror, and you see yourself as uh, Elvin Zinra once again. And... I this plate with this huge leg of chicken, and I just, like, stand there and just stare at her. Touch my face, my body. Yeah, it, it doesn't uh... seem to match exactly what you're doing, but it, it seems to have the illusion in the mirror of it. Yeah. So it feels like a peck. Oh <laughs> it's like a boob, though. Yeah. Oh my so, a tesh. This no. is a wild trip, guys. Yep. And then I fall face first. I drop the bottle of wine. <laughs> I fall face first into the bed. <laughs> okay. Yeah, wine spills over your bed. The chicken just goes like half uneaten on the bed. Like, <laughs> just chicken grease. And you just hear like this gloop, 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 gloop. <laughs> 
<laughs> as the as the wine just like stops spilling, uh, it's like there's like a quarter of it left maybe on the bottle. Oh, Zinra. Free. I. He's, he's alone in a room. <laughs> <laughs> it's make believe. Yeah. I'm picking my teeth, and I'm like, well, you've uh, really honored us as your guests, but your stuff. I don't even know what you've been doing all this time. Like. I went on a little bit of a rant, and uh, I apologize, but you've clearly been, you know, doing uh, pretty well for yourself, but what is it you've been doing? There's so much here. Well, Congar, this is this is all illusory, I will have you know. Okay, uh, that's pretty impressive. Don't call me a loser. Uh, so never add no never <laughs> <laughs> so the hmm, what have you been how's Kaimal is everyone okay is it actually it my whole intent was to, currently I wanted to go back and help but we just kept getting pulled into well honestly seeming misadventure after misadventure we always came out on top and we've always saved lives but in the end it was all basically by the skin of our teeth flying by the seam of our pants not really we didn't even mean to end up where we ended up we end up doing one thing and we fall into these crazy just pitfalls of chaos and we're trying to save the world again i don't know I, i'm glad you're here i honestly feel like we have a much better chance with you around as much as it would pain me to say that i don't know months ago uh not having you around was tough i'm glad Kaimel's doing better though one day you'll see it i just wish i, I could have been there when you killed gazri or not gazri i was there for that but uh wow when you killed your boss well I mean, I didn't necessarily kill him. All right. As long as he suffered? I don't know. I hate that bastard. Me as well. Uh, I look over to where Jan is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jan has turned into his bedroom. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Either way, he's dead now. And... We should have a drink. Death is a funny thing, Conger. <laughs> Don't I know? I talk to ghosts. Exactly. And I will break open a cask and we will drink some more bacon ale. Because <laughs> Atesh is getting off that conversation ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> You guys make your way back to the dining room area. <laughs> See Zerakil there, still drinking away. But for what it's worth, Lightly. thanks for your hospitality, buddy. Right, Zerakil? Thumbs up. Ready? <laughs> yeah, you got to make... Uh, we got to get, like, a soundboard of just random metal squeaks. <laughs> I can arrange that. I would love that, like, a lot. <laughs> um. Yeah, I would, uh, I'd talk to Conger about some of the things that I was doing in Kaimal. Uh, how I made the, uh, I made a, basically a, what the fuck is my brain trying to tell me right now? Kind of thingy? L low income housing? What? what? Low income housing? Yes, the low income housing for people, for the, um, I want to say orphans, Refugee but that's not camp. it. Refugees, there we go. Uh, adult for all the refugees, orphans. adult orphans, basically. Uh, I built the skyship tower, of course. What's that? It's where my skyships dock. Oh. Wow. I guess that makes sense. That way they don't have to, like, 
come all the way down, you can actually... That would be safer, too, if you needed them for an attack. They'd already be elevated. Exactly. Huh. Uh, I rebuilt the Maiden's Kiss, which is where my base of operations is in Kaibal. It is still a casino, uh, but I'd uh, happily tell you that uh, a large portion of the profits from that casino go towards the uh, uh, needy house. Uh, we are opening business relations with all the different cities of Teldori, starting to trade, and I plan to make Kaimal the trading capital of this world. Well, it's interesting, because the longer I spend in the capital, the more I realize how corrupt and backwards it is, and nobody can really give any information on anything. It just seems like a mess. It is a mess. Something I will be looking into eventually, but I am only a month and a half into my Margrave ship, so I can only do so much. That sounds like you're going to evolve rather quickly. You kind of seem always to, so. Cautious optimism, as it were, but I do wish you the best. Also... The Echoing Tankard is rebuilt in all its glory. <laughs> well, I have a funny idea creeping up in my old skull. The world seems to be very short on true adventurers. In fact, most of the time, it seems like one wayward path of people magically manage to kind of get their shit together. Oh my what god, you're franchising. Could... What if we could organize them? I just keep it's thinking. It's hard enough to organize you, so. <laughs> yeah, I know. It would take probably more knowledge and, and skill than I personally have alone, but could you imagine? Oh, and it's something we can work towards, Connor. There's strong adventurers out there everywhere, but they die alone all the time because they have no organization and they're alone. Most of what we've survived, we've survived because we've been together. As much as, you know, again, did not think that's where this was going to go. Honestly, when I first joined the Luckbringers, I thought for sure I'd be... Uh, Probably going and, and, well, no, when I first joined the Luckbringers, I wanted a tavern, and that's all. I still want a tavern. I don't know. I thought I'd go back to my people, but my people are doing their own thing, and honestly, they're kind of better off, I think. I'm going to have to check up on them. Did I tell you that uh, they, uh, they joined the remnants of, uh, what the hell were those guys that helped us fight that that stupid fort of goblins and shit. Remember when we fought that big Goliath, dude? Yes. Yeah. Uh, My notes say. My notes say somewhere. You guys fought the Ravagers. The Ravagers. We, we fought the Ravagers and we... Not Dula. Not Sam. Gomesh was the guy. Oh, I got it here. Yes. We fought Gomesh. He had that griffin. He... He's pretty powerful, but yeah, it turns out they, uh, or he actually started a settlement of specifically only uh, Goliaths, and he's making some sort of Goliath-only city. Uh, I've heard of him. Um, I have some bad news for you, Kungar. Oh, God. Yeah, they've probably. Taken, they've taken over Stilben. Do you Forcefully know where Stilben it... is? Yes. Yes. Well, I have, uh, I, I have a, na a map, so... Most of the people that lived in Stilben are now under their thumb. Ah, for fuck. It was... I thought they, I thought they just settled in an abandoned village. Like I thought, Stillbend was abandoned for some reason. It seemed like 
Well, I mean, there are refugees there from when the dragons attacked. So, yes, Stilben was yes probably no. no longer a city. <laughs> uh, not as what it once was, but the people were still there. It is still their home. My plan was to uh, destroy them, obviously. But if your family is there, perhaps we should uh, talk about how you would like that to be resolved. Yeah, if they want to build a civilization somewhere, this is not how you do it. I can teach them what it takes to build, but I need to get them to listen to me. That means I probably need to fight him. And this time I might have to do it alone. I don't know. I can try to talk him into doing a group fight again to, again, prove I can diversity. I assure you that the Goliaths have no intention of talking. Yeah, but I mean, I want to talk to him about how we're going to lay out our fight. When we fought him one-on-one, -on -one, if I fought him one-on-one, -on -one, I don't know. See, the thing is, is when I get punched, I don't feel quite as much as an average guy but when i get struck by say lightning my god wow just that's all i gotta say wow <laughs> lightning hurts fire hurts and you know what i'm pretty sure it's just i guess magic you can you can push me over a mountain i'll probably be okay i mean i won't be happy about it but i'll probably be okay something about magic hurts i'm sure you uh, appreciate that to its fullest well of course but <laughs> <laughs> but we do need to find a creative way to deal with this problem they can't subdue a populace that's not how it works i'd rather be able to Ugh. i wonder if i could take them myself now that i've got the titan stone knuckles what do you think? How would you do it? Well, no, never mind. You told me how you do it. You <laughs> I already told you. Up. I would exterminate them until they are subdued and then uh, negotiate. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he. I don't think Gomesh wants to be negotiated. Well, I. I talked to him. We had a good talk. Clearly, he misinterpreted what I what I told him. I was trying to teach him diversity and that other races and cultures can actually be of great value. And in some cases, even better than Goliaths, but... Uh, he basically took it the opposite, which I guess I shouldn't be surprised about. He's unbearably strong and also unbearingly unwise thing is Kongar in our line of work the world is a big place and there's a lot of places that need to be saved I know I had to put that on the back burner because the Emerald Sun and the the ley lines the ley lines seem to be in the general like we can't let them continue to seal the ley lines. We need the ley lines to fight other evils. At the same time, there was part of me that's like, if they sealed all the ley lines in the world, then the Emerald Sun can't come back. But that that is more of a band-aid to a problem. Every time something's crept up to try to destroy the world or hurt too much of the innocent, people suffer, innocents suffer. But they've always been put back into the ground. And there's always been times of peace. <sighs> I just wish we could organize the right people's efforts. wonder how Irk's doing. I think when the time comes, people will rise to the occasion. Yeah, well, look at you and Kaimel. I honestly just thought you were... Trying to find fame, wealth, and glory, and uh, I honestly wasn't quite certain you were going to put in, well, can you blame me, put in the effort with, you know, the 
little people. Honestly, little people and commoners seem to mostly annoy you. That's because they're so poor. And dumb. And quite dumb. And that's me saying that. <laughs> too true, Congar. Too true. <laughs> uh, this has been a weird few months. It hasn't even been a year since I met you, and I have more stories with you guys than I do with my own family. Most of the time, it was just trying to find food. I just ate more food in this one sitting than we came across in three months. Do you know how bizarre that is? But I think, I don't know if I want to save my people or if they're even worth saving. They've been doing the same thing and the world has been advancing and they've basically just kept doing the exact same thing. They don't even embrace this, the, the ancestral guardians. Like they don't even understand it. I ever tell you about that? This, this is not what I carry with me. They think is a weakness. They think it's a curse. It saved all of them more times than I can count, but they think it makes me frail. I need protection. My, my family and their spirits can never rest because they have to try to keep me and my friends alive. They don't seem to understand that this it's not, that's not what it is. Well, I think your people respond to force. Yeah, well, the only time that the Guardians ever strike back is when somebody's trying to hurt somebody I care about. It's never actually to protect me. Well? Apparently, I think they're just manifesting as my... I don't know, my, my will to kind of help my friends, but my will to fight my own battles is there. If that makes any sense. I think so. But trying to understand what I'm going through when my culture has very little actual documentation, because we have no written language, which is why I'm so desperate to learn how to read. But maybe that'll come after the Emerald Sun. So, as you guys are talking about that, we're going to go to Adno and Torm. What are you doing out there, Adno? <laughs> playing cards with myself, pretending I'm playing cards with him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, touching moment between Adno and Torm. Torm's staring at you, like, blindly. <laughs> Pretty much. <clears throat> yeah, he's just looking at his hands. He's, like, peeling off, like, large swaths of skin that have become frozen. He's like just taking it off, like just dropping it to the side. So I have like his hand sitting out in front of him and I'll play his hand and my hand at the same time. And every time he gets like a good thing, because I'll get excited for him and be like, oh, good job, bud. That really hurt me. And then you just see him like slowly just go take off a bit of skin, toss it to the and side. I gag a little bit. And he's just kind of like, when, when he does that, he, like, looks at it and starts, like, like rubbing where the skin is missing, like, over and over and over again. Okay, I'm gonna, like, actually heave, like, Kelsey heave. Can we not describe this? <laughs> <laughs> it's what he's he wants doing. To keep going just, so he's, bad. <laughs> he's just be enjoying the stinging sensation, the pain of it. Yeah. I'll like vomit to the side and keep playing. Okay, good, guys, good hand, but... along. <laughs> he, he doesn't seem to really notice. He just, like, mm. just keeps doing it. Um, but yeah, so eventually uh, it comes time to rest. What do you do when it comes time to rest, Edna? Go to my room. Okay. So yeah, you pop back inside. You do your, your rest Although, inside. Hmm? Uh, Conger and I were supposed to go separate. Yeah, so as... So as who's... As you go inside, uh, you do see Kongar and Atesh and Zerkil kind of discussing things at the table there with ales and things. I, I, I like 
wipe the vomit from my face and be like, I need four hours. I will be back. All right. On the right, fourth one down. (laughs) Sir Hercule, just visit with Atesh, buddy. You seem like you're lost in thought. And I get up. I get up and uh, go and check on Torm. Okay, you go and you you check on Torm. Do you... <laughs> Zerakil, you saying anything at all, or? I'll uh, <clears throat> I'll check on Torm as well. Okay, yeah, you get up from the table. <laughs> you leave a touch there at the table. I will get up and I will head to my bedchamber. Very well. Now, when I go in my room, are there skulls? Everywhere. <laughs> oh, giddy. The one, there's the one wall uh, behind the dresser, and it's just like a wall of skulls. I'd go to like scream in excitement, uh, but then I remember that Zerkiel doesn't like them, so I like whisper scream, <laughs> and then I just like. <laughs> Bring them all, like, as many as I can to my bed, and then tell them stories of our adventures until I fall asleep. Yes. <laughs> Edno's kind of cute in a really macrab way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Zerakil and Kongar, you go outside, you see Torm out there, you see that he's flayed some of the skin off of his finger. It's just sitting there, like, frozen, like a, like a, like, you know those uh, sheet sleds you can get? Uh, it's like that. It's like a half-curled, overly frozen just slice of skin. Uh, I look around and see if I can't like start a fire for him or something. Look around. Well, that's smart. <laughs> there, there's things to start a fire if you wanted to. There's some like, yeah. wood around timber that you guys have. Can we set up the tent around him? He's just he's outside the tent. Ugh. I'll start a fire. Good right. idea. Yeah. I'll gather fire. wood with you, and then I'm like, Zerakil, you've been quiet tonight. What's going on? You're, Worried about Torm? He's asking you as you're like making this like uh, house fire, like this like little this, like stacks of wood. Yeah, I'm worried about him. Where's your head at? What are you thinking about? We basically just went into a, a world filled with gold and pictures of a tesh. Honestly, that doesn't phase me so much. No, but you definitely didn't take in the uh, surroundings. So, if you know you got some thoughts, talk to me. We'll figure it out. I'm not sure how strong I'll be to go through all this and help help him the way we have to. It's not about whether it works or not, you know that, right? It's about trying, because if we don't, we can't call ourselves his companions. We may not have known him long, but this man brought back our our friends, you know? They he Brock and Sindri are back and breathing and have a normal life again because this guy basically went days without sleep praying and trying which I'm sure you can respect coming from where you uh, stand I worry about him He, I don't see the same faith in his eyes as I used to yeah but he's not outwardly attacking whatever he's fighting and enduring he's doing it inside whatever we're perceiving now is just almost nothing but there's moments there's gleating fleeting moments he made the ultimate sacrifice of uh or going everything he knew and his faith to put up for his friends. And he kind of like stops and slowly turns toward you, Zerakiel, and says, I did, and it was worth it. 
here. I give this to you. And he gives you his uh, uh, Morden's keg. I... Bongar just puts his head down. I don't need this anymore. But I'll hold on to it for you. We're going to give it back to you, Torm. You're not done. I don't enjoy ale anymore. I enjoy other things. <laughs> we'll get you back. We'll bring you back. You might be lost right now, but we'll find you. See, see as the sun's like completely set, it's quite dark, it's quite night. If you guys spend too much time outside, you'll uh, probably take a point of exhaustion from not having a full rest. How about we take turns, Eric? I'll stay out for now. Come back in a few hours. I can trade with Adno, too. Sure. As sure as the setting and the rising of the sun. We'll figure this out. And I head to the bedchambers. Very well. Um. All right. Uh, in Zerakiel's bedchamber, besides all the ostentatious luxury bedding and everything, <laughs> there is a small uh, nook in the corner where there's a small shrine to Pelor. And there's like, it's basically a miniature version of the temple in the Keep Out Keep. There's like trees growing along the edges and like a little uh, stained glass window. There's like a little bit of light trailing through it uh, and like the picture of the sun like glowing in it. Well, hmm. Yeah, I'll take off all my armor and put on like bed stuff and then pray at the shrine for a little bit. Alright. Now you offload some of your thoughts into the shrine. Sorry, uh, what was that? Yeah, you offload some of your, your thoughts into the shrine. Um, but yeah. So the rest of the night is uneventful as you guys switch in and out from Torm and uh, in the morning, I would like somebody to make another weather check for me. Not me. Um, while I'm doing the second check, I want to do more potions because we've done a rest. Okay. Give me uh, a few yeah. I'll do it. I mean, that's better. 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 We think. We think. Uh, you see... In the morning, as you guys kind of come out of the magnificent mansion, Atesha's magnificent mansion. I'm hungover. Uh, yeah, you're hungover. Uh, it's probably like a... I'm with my skin. It's, it, it's probably like a minus four, minus five kind of thing outside right now. It's not too bad. You see some light clouds. Uh, sky's blue beyond that. Uh, it's quite nice. There's lots of snow on the ground that has not yet melted. I make a snowball. All right. <laughs> Zerkiel's getting in. No, don't start that again. <laughs> so as, the, uh, as you guys all step out of the mansion and the doors just disappears behind you, Jan feels all of a sudden lighter as he comes outside. What? What the? Uh, uh, <laughs> something wrong, Jan? What? Did you take, did you take all the, the bottles back somehow? No, they should be on you. Where are they? Did you lose them? <laughs> Doesn't insight on you. Uh, okay, I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> look, look, look. I get to roll deception. <laughs> <laughs> sure, roll deception. Yeah, one second. He okay. did roll a natural 20, though. <laughs> oh, okay. I've, I've rolled three in a row for Torm. <laughs> well, two for Torm, one for, uh, for Jan there. It just kept rolling really high. 
I'm glad you did for Torm, because holy fuck. Yeah, he, he, he sees through it. Yeah. <laughs> I just give him a big old <laughs> smile. <laughs> he gives you a big old smile back. Um, yeah, and Zerkil uh, just openly makes a snowball in his hands. I dare you. I throw the snowball at him. At Kagar? Because he dared. <laughs> yeah, make a... Throw it at a Tesh! Make a dex That roll, motherfucker sir. is gonna... <laughs> Alright, dex, okay. No, it's Eric. <laughs> oh. He's going against your AC. Yeah, so, you throw it, and you just, like, duck your head just in time, and it goes right over your shoulder. We gonna do this? <laughs> I scoop up a snowball. Yeah, you scoop up a snowball. I okay. underhand, like, kind of toss it at him, like, you know, teasing-ish. Okay. Yeah, make your, uh, make your dex check. Yeah, so, and you, it just, like, pats against your shield, Xerakiel. Come at me, bro. Aw, uh, you're done. <laughs> Wanna build a snowman? When we have time, I'll build a snowman. <laughs> Fair enough. So, Zerko gets onto his Pegasus. You guys get moving on the car, Jan's on the cart, and uh, you guys are pulling all the supplies, and uh, Torm is kind of walking ahead, just picking away at his blisters and things. Kind of whips a little bit. Is that Torm? Yep. It is. Oh what up, buddy? Oh my god. <laughs> Literally just sat down at the computer. Okay. Yeah. Well, we got to have You've had a left. successful session of not killing us. Yeah. Yeah. So, you've you spent the entire night outside in minus 32 weather. You're just you're just your fingers were completely freezing like the skin was freezing. You're just picking it off and like feeling the pain of it and then uh it after it on you. Yeah. After Zerakiel and Congra had like a bit of a conversation about you, like as if you weren't there, you turned over and you just like handed Zerakiel your uh your keg. Morden's keg. Damn. So you guys continue to walk on. And just in the distance there, you see The kind of large-ish town uh, of Moldire. You guys end up crossing up over a large stone bridge. Uh, all of the roofs are kind of covered in this uh, lightly melting snow. Uh, you see lots of people, well, not really too many people, uh, fairly sparse actually, kind of mulling about carefully, uh, picking up what they can. There's some buildings that have been destroyed. Uh, you see a, a swath of uh, uh, forest just on the edge of town has been just covered in, in frost. Um, you see uh, as whole buildings have been uprooted, picked up, and looks like they've been thrown into the river. Uh, still standing, it appears, would be uh, one of the inns. Uh, there's still some businesses going. Uh, some have some kind of harsh repairs in them. Uh, but the town has taken some damage. It kind of looks like the dragon came for fun messed up some things, and then left. We head into town. Okay. So you guys head in to the town of Eldire. As you guys bring the supplies over, you immediately see as people kind of run over and they say, Oh! It's his supplies! I, th that must be it. it! It's what it is, right? That's what it is. Yeah, and Compliments of Vasselheim. They start rushing over and they start like taking off the the tarp from the back and start pulling out like whatever food they can. Uh, Torm is like just coming over the bridge now and they say, "Giant!" and they start taking off and like running in the various directions, trying to make their way into the the houses. Ah, uh, yes, I forgot about him. <laughs> we nicely unpack things and put them down so they stop tearing at our cart <laughs> uh yeah you, you will actually spend scattered 
Uh, I know, but they're gone, so now we can unpack things. <laughs> yeah, you hear like a little bit further in town, ding, 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 of like a, a bell being rung, uh, telling the town that there's danger. So you just hear like shutters uh, closing, uh, doors locking. <sighs> I will cast thaumaturgy. Not thaumaturgy. Is it thaumaturgy? Yes, yep. thaumaturgy. Um, and with a loud commanding voice, I will say, People of Moldir, we are the Luckbringers. On behalf of Vasselheim, we bring you food. Fear not the giant in our midst. He is a companion. You see, uh, make a, uh, actually make a persuasion check. Here we go. Yeah. Fair enough. 16. You hear, you see, as like some people kind of start poking out a little bit more, start kind of slowly start walking towards the cart. Uh, Ongar will start making food for people. Lots. All right. Uh, Bring me your rations. I will cook you excellent meals. I'll okay. take some uh, supplies from the cart and I will use like my any cup making cream and whatever so i can actually kind of prolong how much food they've sent okay you can make a persuasion sit... check as well because it's it's their rat their supplies yes god willing if they're willing to let me so they all kind of come forward they can kind of smell the delicious meal that you're making uh using your uh magical herb pouch and uh, any cup uh, and the various like rations and like fresh foods that they actually have kind of stored away in that uh, in that cart um, I can make potatoes taste like something you've never had before and it was amazing yep. yeah uh, people are just in rapture and the any cup make cheese whiz <laughs> uh, <laughs> please no don't no I'm joking don't do it fondue <laughs> fondue uh, Oh, it'll God. take three rubies to make cheese with. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh God. But Torm is like there, kind of like probably about forty or so feet back, just like across the bridge, but just staying there, kind of like looking yeah. around, feeling out of place. Uh, no worries, all, my friend. All, all the people gather around. There's talk. Uh, people are still kind of keeping. Anyone who's food. injured, please, they get first dibs at the food because they heal. Yep. You see them bring over like the sick, uh, some people in, like makeshift wheelchairs and carts and things. Some people that have like injured their legs. People that have like have been missing legs, missing arms from the attack. Um, and they all kind of uh, just start selling out, and they uh, they are very much enjoying your guys' company and the fact that you guys brought all these supplies and the delicious food, and then you get lots of compliments, Congar, some pats on the back, and some people say it's the best thing they've ever tasted, and they start to ask for your name, and you know, like, where'd you We are the cook? Luckbringers. This is... We are accompanied by one of the original. He is currently Margrave of Kaimel, come all this way to, you know, spread the good word and help out his fellow man. And I'll just give a wave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you see from uh, one of the people that came from one of the inns there, it's a, a probably more slightly more well-traveled uh, kind of looking individual, uh, probably in his like mid-20s, got like uh, short black hair and like this kind of buzzed mushroom cut. Uh, and he's got just like uh, basic like uh, dusty traveler's gear. Because uh, I was like, oh, I, I think I heard about the luck bringers actually. Uh, wait. You're telling me if you're the luck bringers, then that must be a Tesh. Exactly. A Tesh of Zelsazen Kaladim. Right. At your service. And he just rushes up, goes to shake your hand. See, that's why I don't say your name, because I. Uh, I'm Kongar. <laughs> that's Ad No. No, it's not because you're famous, it's because I can't pronounce it. Get over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> He starts, um, yeah, he starts to like look around, like talk to the rest of you guys, and kind of get a beat on everybody. Before too many people come this up to general. us, I'm gonna turn to Zerakiel and kind of gesture towards the injured people and be like, "You're up, bud." I tend to the injured. All right. Uh, just using lay on hands and stuff. How, how much of your lay on hands are you gonna use? 
like you could probably use all of it essentially today and probably heal a good most of uh, the populace. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. All right. Uh, so you take your time as uh, people kind of come toward you. Uh, you kind of like sit on the back of the now empty cart uh, and kind of act as a kind of a cleric doctor and start to heal all their wounds. I mean, you can't regrow their stumps and everything, but you can close them up. Um, and yeah, you really kind of start taking time and people start to uh, really notice you and they seem to see you as this kind of almost like uh, demigod type hero they look at your your armor and your shield and your weapons and just how you're built you look like a very just uh, unwavering stoic heroic individual this is Zerakiel paladin zealot of his kind well uh, yeah I, see Zerakiel I learned the word zealot good job also, well also, the word I was looking for yesterday, Atesh, was eccentric. Oh, me? No, no, no. I don't think so. Hmm. I don't swing that way. <laughs> Maybe I have the word wrong. <laughs> I think you were looking for a No, you lied to me. <laughs> I cackle. It sounded so precise. And Jan comes up behind you, he's like, yeah, Kongar, I, I think that eccentric means that he's short. So you, you shouldn't mm. use that wrong. And and zealous... Ze Insight. Zealot, that, that, that means he has herpes? Okay, now I know you're full of shit. Okay, hold on. Oh, so for the first one, for, for the... Uh, for the short one... Uh, actually, I, I should probably look that up really quickly here. Give me a second. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> okay. Core. Whoa. Uh, dis holy. <laughs> holy. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, he, you believe him. <laughs> uh, so he rolled a. I thought, I thought we. Uh... For the first one. For the first one, he rolled a. Definitely a 23. And for his second one, for the herpes one. Uh, he rolled a 28. Yeah. That's Amazing close. insight. Amazing. Still lost it, though. <laughs> Ungar's not even built for this. No, he, he is, though. <laughs> Actually, I'm wise, so yeah, never mind. No, no, no. Jan is. Jan's built for all this. <laughs> Specifically. Hmm. Maybe I have the word wrong, but I... Yep, Zerakiel definitely can't have herpes. That's just not... Yeah, yeah, I, I think you just got the word wrong. That's probably what it was. Uh, yeah, but no, you gotta get those definitions right there, buddy. I mean, I kind of believe you, but you still kind of sound like a dick. Maybe it's just your voice? No. It's his voice. No, I, I, I think a lot of people... <laughs> <really> like <it. laughs> Oh yes, everyone just loves you. You're you're just so kind and generous and I see everyone. That, that that's sarcasm. See, I learned that. <laughs> Did I say that right? Is, uh, is are you I supposed to so. accent that afterward? Sarcasm, I think word. sarcasm is a wide gap. <laughs> what well, I'm confused. This sounds like this sounds like when you guys spell with numbers. Yeah. Just like uh, that. You mean Mathematics? <laughs> oh. Algebra? <laughs> this is... You know what? Let's just help these people. Right. <laughs> I'd like you guys to roll a d6 to see if the dragon comes. If you roll a 6, the dragon comes. Oh, fuck! Wait, wait, are there kids yet there? Yeah. Okay. I am going to... <gasps> oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh! <laughs> oh! Okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna fight with a giant oh. rat as well because so. I was gonna take out an animal for the kids. <laughs> All right. So you take out a rat to like show the kids. I'm like, oh my gosh, he's so cute. And some other kid is like, oh, I hate rats. They have so much disease. And Roger is not diseased. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you guys kind of start to hear in the distance, just like. 
Can I do like an insight since I fought dragons to give uh, like extra little bit of warning to the villagers to run? You don't really see it currently at this point in time. Just give me a sec. So, uh, you, and what you guys do notice is that it was lightly cloudy, but clouds start to roll in almost fairly quickly over the course of the next couple hours or so. Uh, then it starts to snow kind of lightly and then heavier and then the temperature starts to drop and it gets darker and uh, everybody get inside so uh, from what you guys know you would probably begin to realize there's something wrong but you guys need to make a check though just to make sure uh, so I'll allow a history or a nature check wow hmm. Kasson got a natural one on his check for some reason actually I'll give him advantage because he should Okay, no, so he's got it. History he's got it. or so nature? Idea. History or nature. Do you want to say or Yeah, just so you guys all individual have, have an idea. Okay. So you're told by Haskin. Says, ah, this this isn't normal. This is something's coming. I can feel it. Everybody run for cover, evacuate the town. I yell in a, my biggest booming voice. And one of the Something's guys approaching. Like, well, are we supposed to go? There's no way to evacuate to. It's just miles of snow and forest. It can find us. It can smell us. How many people are there? I go to a uh, test. It's probably about like 200 or so. 200 people can fit in my mansion. I was just about to ask. Um, but... I'll just like, and they're mostly all surrounding us right now. Uh, some of them will start like scatter and go back into their houses. Uh, Everybody Thomas stay Trigi, here. Get over here. The dragon is coming. Get into this magic portal. It'll save you. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll cast a uh, magnificent mansion and open the door. It's a big double door so people can get in easily. Okay. Make a persuasion check with advantage. Persuasion. Oh, yeah. So oh, fuck yeah. you see as a bunch of people start running in, just like, he's right, it's beautiful in here. And they all start like running in and a bunch of other people like go to grab the others who went back in the houses and start like looking for their friends and family. Uh, as a bunch of them run in, I don't you see, believe I, I need to concentrate on that, do I? I'm not sure. Because that might it just be last just... eight hours. It lasts 24 hours. Oh, last 24 hours, right, right. Yeah, I think it just lasts 24 hours, I think. Yeah. Unless it's concentration. It should say no. It just lasts. It just lasts twenty four hours. Yeah. Duration twenty four hours. Uh, but you do see as uh, a couple people that seem to be like a man and wife. Like, ha, ha, have you seen our kids anywhere? And they start looking around, uh, going through the houses, like calling their names, uh, but they don't seem to find them. Uh, they may be in the mansion already. We will keep a lookout. All right. Now make a persuasion check with disadvantage because they're looking for their kids. How close is the dragon, would we figure, like, at this point? At this point? Uh, you could probably like, get we have, uh, like, like, a couple few hundred minutes? feet off. Like, you're probably, you're probably in the minutes range right now. Okay, I will desperately... I'm going to use my big booming voice to yell out for... I, first, I ask the children's names. Okay. Oh, so son, uh, Frederica? And <laughs> our daughter, Lucy? And I will basically, I'm going to try to yell out in the best way I can, as loud as I can, that their parents are looking for them and to come towards my voice. I am going to. I pull down my top, uh, which is a fairly loose fitting uh like cloth cloth doublet kind of thing mm -hmm. and i just like extend my arms out and dragon wings split from my shoulders cool uh and i just say i'll distract him as long as i can okay. and um, i'll fly into the air who has a passive perception above 17 17 or above mine is 19 
Okay. Passive perception. Yeah, I have mm -hmm. above. I think mine is high. All right. Uh, all of you would actually see uh, two, appears to be two children kind of like up on the second floor of the inn. Uh, and they're just like looking through the window and they're uh, kind of like looking up and through the uh, I reflection. Throw out the, the flying glass. carpet. Yeah, before you do that, before through the uh, pane of the glass, you can kind of see in the reflection uh, this kind of shadowy figure kind of flying through the air. And you can like look up in the sky and you see the dragon is there as it's about to bear down onto the town. And we'll stop the session there for today. But yeah, you take out the carpet. I have my wings. Fair enough. You're probably faster. I'm going to head to the dragon. No, I'm going to the dragon. You're yeah. going to save the children. That's okay. your job. <laughs> <laughs> well, then what, why'd you say it? Like you wanted to save the children. No, I said I'll like, as much time as I can. <laughs> Adno's like, I'll save the children. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be safe in my belly. Wait, what? I don't know. The session's <laughs> over, it's funny. <laughs> I mean... Everyone just, like, turns to Adno. <laughs> That's where we end. <laughs> yeah, yes. seems like Adno. Good session, gentlemen. We'll pick it up next good Wednesday. Session. It's actually really good just, like, chilling out RP together. Uh, my god, we gotta do something for Torm. <laughs> Fuck. Yep. Mm -hmm. Will Brian be back with us? Or does he have his own plan? Guess we'll Brian see. can teleport to us. I have a magic object that he can just... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to be working on some plans with Brian here. So. Uh, yeah, he's, um, he will have to uh, behind-the-scenes chat with you, Jared. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I was like, oh, we're just going to go, to go get killed by a dragon. It's like, oh, this is timing. He's like, you probably could use all my expertise as, like, I don't know about the cat lady shit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all his cat lady expertise. Yeah. Brian mm -hmm. shows up like the end of Avengers Endgame. Fucking droves cat of cat people. Oh, symbol! <laughs> On your left. <laughs> Nyan! <laughs> Senpai? <Yeah. laughs> Mm -hmm. Oni-chan? <laughs> if you're looking for some fun, fast-paced, and light-hearted adventures, seek out none other than the disastrous but well-intended Professor Humbert Drumsley in his glorious 5e adventure codex.